48. The hydrogen fluoride molecule, which is HF, is more polar than a water molecule, which is H2O. For example, it has a greater dipole moment. Yet the molar enthalpy of vaporization for liquid hydrogen fluoride is lesser than that for water. And then explain. Okay, so we have the two molecules here. We have HF. Hold on, I have to redo that H. HF. And then we have H2O. Now, they did say that the molar enthalpy of vaporization... Now, an enthalpy of vaporization is a delta H, because that's enthalpy, and we just can say that that's VAP. The delta H for vaporization is the enthalpy of vaporization. is just the energy needed to vaporize from a liquid always going to a gas. So when you're talking about a delta H vaporization, you always have your substance starting off as a liquid and ending up as a gas. So both of these would be starting off as a liquid and going to its respective gas. Now just know that the higher the delta H vaporization, generally, the harder it is. So the more effort required in, you know, in terms of energy to do the turnover, meaning to go from a liquid to a gas. Now, this could be coming from many different, you know, things, whether um, you have more intermolecular forces or you have a higher molar weight. Chances are those two things are uh, the reasons behind why some molecules have a really, really high enthalpy of vaporization. Now, if we just draw these Lewis structures real quick, we will see that HF has just a hydrogen single bound to a fluorine, and you got three lone pairs on the fluorine. The H2O has oxygen in the middle, surrounded by the two hydrogens, and the two lone pairs on one side. Now, if we do talk about the intermolecular forces... There's three of them for your covalent compounds. There's always dispersion forces, which every molecule has. There is no exception to that. So dispersion all around. These are the weakest intermolecular forces. And HF, if I cut this down the middle, right, it's clearly a polar molecule. Remember that your asymmetrical molecules, the stuff that is not the same on both sides, are always polar. And water is always, always, always a polar molecule as well. Keep in mind the trick that anytime that you have lone pairs in your center atom, it's always going to be polar. So I spot out a lone pair in the middle, boom, it's polar. So with polar molecules... You have dispersion, and you also have dipole-dipole attractions. Okay? So we're still not finding any difference between uh, the difference between a molar enthalpy of vaporization. Now we come to the last intermolecular force, which is the hydrogen bond. And a hydrogen bond, a hydrogen bond only happens with three bonds, a HF bond, a HO bond, and an HN bond. And clearly, we have them both in here. We have an HF bond, so this molecule, HF, obviously has hydrogen bonding. So I'll write that down. Hydrogen bond. What's going on with my handwriting? Hydrogen bond, ding, and on here you also have a OH bond for water, so that also has hydrogen bonding. So that doesn't really explain the difference in the molar enthalpy of vaporization. However, if we just look a little bit closer, for HF we have one bond 
potentially, that could hydrogen bond. It's literally just an H and an F. But if I look at water, I have an OH bond here, and then I have an OH bond on the other side. The central atom can be used twice but your outer ones are only allowed to be used once. So I have an OH bond on the left side and I have an OH bond on the right side. So technically this is two times the opportunity. And that is why the more chances you can hydrogen bond, so the higher the chances for, I'm just gonna say HB, hydrogen bonding, the higher the delta H vaporization. Even though they said that, yes, fluorine is the more electronegative element than oxygen, but it all comes down to two possibilities of hydrogen bonding as opposed to just the one. So I will just group this together. Basically everything that I've stated, that's, you know, goes with the answer to this question. But I just want to reread it just to make sure we did answer it properly once I am done coloring in. So they did say that it's more polar. It's more polar because the fluorine is more electronegative than the oxygen. So if you have a more electronegative element, that always means that it's going to be more polar. However, since water has two slots for hydrogen bonding and HF only has one, this would require more effort to go from a liquid to a gas because you have more chances for intermolecular forces, more hydrogen bonding. And I hope that helps. Thank you for viewing the video. Um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below. Love talking to you guys and I hope you're having a great day. Keep learning, always keep learning, and keep studying hard. You guys got this. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.